Hey folks, Nick here from another BookTube channel. We're in the middle of Garb August and I've been talking about uh, like novelizations and media tie-in books. So I figured why not do the same thing with comic books. Uh, I have a lot of comics based on horror movies. I like to collect um, you know, the first appearance of a horror movie character or just the first adaptation of one. So I thought it'd be fun to just kind of flip through a bunch of them here. I'm not going to go in depth into any of them uh, just because there's, there's so many, uh, but we'll start off right here with army of darkness. This is um, art uh, adapted and art by John Bolton. Uh, I believe these are uh, paint. This is a painted comic and his style is really, really good. Uh, and it's a really good fit for the evil dead material. Um, this is the first evil dead comic book first appearance of Ash in comics. Um, this is a good sequence. Uh, the, the sequence from the, the army of darkness movie where he's fighting the demon in the well and he catches the, uh, the chainsaw and puts it on the stump of his hand and just, uh, goes to town and slaughters another iconic moment there declaring the shotgun is his boomstick. Uh, I'm actually, I'm not a huge fan of the army of darkness movie. It's probably my least favorite of the original trilogy. I love Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2 is one of my favorite movies ever. Uh, and I, I really uh, enjoy Evil Dead 1 as well. The sequels, like the or the modern reboots or whatever, are, are, have been okay, but they lack they lack a certain Bruce Campbellness that the original trilogy is missing. I don't dislike the Army of Darkness movie, it's just not my favorite of the three. Um, uh, next up is Blair Witch Project. I actually just Reobtained this book. I had a copy for a while. I had a first printing. Uh, I sold it, and then as soon as I sold it, I was like, ah, I shouldn't have gotten rid of that. I kind of like that because um, I actually do. I, I I actually like this comic. Um, it's a one-off. Uh, stories by Jen Van Meter. Uh, there's three stories in here. The first one's by Tommy Lee Edwards, which is uh, very much this like kind of like Mike Medola approach of just heavy blacks and uh, chiaroscuro like uh, compositions. I mean, the entire comic is black and white. So that's maybe a stupid thing to say, but hopefully you get what I mean of just the, the emphasis on shadow, the emphasis on, on blacks. Uh, I think it looks pretty good. I don't know Tommy Lee Edwards's work uh, too much, but it's definitely a name that I've heard before this story here is guy davis doing the art and he's another one that i've definitely heard the name guy davis before um I, yeah if you if you i mean in this moment I, I cannot think of what i remember him from but the uh, the art looks good and in, in general this entire entire comic looks really good uh just interesting weird kind of artistic choices uh that i really dug and i'm glad i got this book back into my collection I'll, I'll give it a more thorough read uh, in my own time, but Blair Witch Project movie is also, uh, you know, I, I, I think it still holds up pretty well. I think I saw it for the first time. Uh, I mean, well after the fact, I mean, probably like 20 years later, because what it's 1999. It came out uh, and I thought I was pretty impressed by it. It's not too bad. Uh, this star course presents annual 1998. Uh, what's in here? Something pretty interesting. Um, it is, the first appearance of Buffy the Vampire Slayer in comics. This art is done by, who was it? Luke Ross with inks by Rick Ketchum. Uh, while going through this, I, I mean, I really noticed there was a lot of like, I don't know, <laughs> uh, a lot of opportunities to put Buffy in kind of uh, compromising positions. She's got a lot of like, crotch shots and and just like open open crotch uh you know booty shots and while i was looking at this i i kind of got the um i was reminded of like j scott campbell's artwork a little bit and that makes sense i, I looked into uh the artist's uh bibliography and it apparently they did work on gen 13 uh and i think that that definitely makes sense i i could definitely see this style of art for a female character being in a gen 13 comic. 
did get Sarah Michelle Gellar's likeness uh, down pretty well. Looks a lot like her in a lot of these panels. Um, so I really like this that right there. That's a, that's a great panel. Love that. So uh, I said I was reminded of J. Scott Campbell's art. I do like this art more than J. Scott Campbell. I, I'm not a huge fan of his. I think it, he pushes his proportions a little too far. A lot of the time. <laughs> uh, Child's Play 2, first appearance of Chucky in comics. Uh, very surprising artist here. It's Derek Robertson and friends. So I imagine he penciled this and he said, I absolutely am not wasting time inking it. So they probably just brought in a whole bunch of different anchors to, uh, to work on this one. The Chucky movies are pretty interesting. It's an interesting franchise. Uh, I enjoy the first two for what they are. Um, I don't know that they hold up as scary. Um, the third one stinks. And I actually do enjoy Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky uh, for for camp purposes. They're, they're terrible. They're awful movies. Um, but they are definitely watchable, uh, I would say. Uh, watchably bad. Um, <laughs> but the best Chucky movies are actually the like the direct-to-video ones that came out somewhat recently, the Curse of Chucky and Cult of Chucky with uh, Fiona Dourif. Those are great. Curse of Chucky is the best one of the entire franchise, honestly. It's the closest one to an actual like good horror movie um, than, than all of the rest. Uh, this comic is uh, not too impressive. <laughs> um, I, I think you know, it's probably definitely not the the thing that on Derek Robertson's resume that he's most proud of. It's pretty good. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's also not very good. <laughs> uh, Fright Night. I really like this movie. This is a great movie uh, from from the 80s. This is the uh, first adaptation. I've never heard of Lennon Del Sol or Jeff D before, but this is uh, their adaptation of Fright Night. Actually, I would love to rewatch this movie. It's been a while, and it's as far I think it's really one of my favorite vampire movies. It's uh, it's really good. If you've never seen it, check it out. Um, who's the who's that guy in it? Can't remember his name. I want I keep wanting to say Roddy Piper. No, but it's Roddy Roddy McDowell. <laughs> it would be it would be great if Roddy Roddy Piper was in it but he was not. Uh, but yeah, that was Fright Night really quick. This one, I've actually, I've still got the bag and board. This is the only one I got to treat carefully here because this is uh, surprisingly a valuable comic book, Halloween number one. Uh, it's pretty hard to come by. And in this condition, it would probably be worth over a hundred dollars, um, which is so stupid because it's, it's not, it's not good. <laughs> it's not a very good book at all. I'm not a fan of the artwork. Uh, this, I, I remember I tried reading it when I first got it and it's like, it's unreadable. Um, <laughs> there's just nothing, nothing to it. It came out in 2000 and you can kind of tell from this art style that it's that turn of the century comic look that just is the reason that a lot of readers were turned off of comics at that time. Uh, but if you ever want to see what the inside of Halloween one look like the first appearance of Michael Myers in comics. Here is your opportunity. Feel free to pause on any of these pages. And uh, there you go. Now you could say you've seen it. Now you don't need to spend a hundred dollars uh, to get your own. It's a uh, really, really not worth it. Get that back in the bag and board though, because that's my retirement fund right there. Jason goes to hell. The final Friday first appearance of Jason Voorhees in comics. This actually, uh, I consider this the, like his real first appearance. Uh, another Topps comic came out on the same day called Satan's Six, uh, number four, I think it was. Some god awful uh, later later years Jack Kirby comic, where technically Jason Voorhees does appear in that. Um, so they're like tied for first appearance, but this is an actual Friday the Thirteenth title, so. I think it only makes sense to consider this one the actual first appearance. I've seen every Friday the 13th movie. They are definitely a mixed bag. Um, this comic has some good moments in it. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to think. You know what? I think 
final chapter, uh, Friday the 13th number four, is definitely my favorite of the pack. You got Corey Feldman in there. You got Tom Savini back on the uh, the makeup and and blood. That's that's a, that's probably the closest thing to a good movie the Friday the Thirteenth franchise has ever put out. Uh, but they're they're they are what they are. Once you get to like the later ones, once you've seen one, you've kind of seen them all. And we move over to Leatherface number one, first appearance of Leatherface in comics. Uh, I. Let me see who did the art of this. Oh, you know what? I haven't been calling out who did the art uh, on the previous issues. That's my bad. Uh, on this one, you had you got Kirk Jarvinen with assists by Jason Moore and inkers ink by Jeff Austin. And I actually really like the way this comic looks. It's very bloody. Um, it's it, it, it is as bloody as you kind of want a Texas Chainsaw Massacre comic to be. Now, that's one complaint I have about. The Friday the Thirteenth one and the Halloween uh, adaptation is they're a little um, they're a little boring. Um, whereas this one, you're getting a lot of blood for your money, uh, so I think that's that's pretty pretty good deal. I did have this entire series at one point; it's a four issue series, but this art team leaves after this book, and the artist for two, three, and four is it's so bad that th- there's literally no merit or value to those books whatsoever. Like even just as a fan of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is in my opinion, the, the, the first movie in that franchise is the best, one of the best slashers ever. Although maybe you'll debate if it's a slasher or not, but of like Halloween nightmare on Elm street, Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the best one. It, it's an excellent movie. Um, but even still, I, I I was I I had to free up some room in my short boxes, and I was like, oh yeah, let me get let me get rid of books two, three, and four of this. This is absolute garbage. Uh, see, oh, we got a nice Tim Vigil uh, pin up on the back for Splatter. I guess that's another series. I love Tim Vigil. I have a Tim Vigil original. Maybe I'll show it one day. Um, Reanimator number one. Uh, I just got this signed at Terrificon uh, this uh, the past couple this past week by Jeffrey Combs, the reanimator who played Herbert West, which was really neat. He signed a poster for me too. He signed it. Nick, who's going to believe a talking head. And he's got a great signature really like pops out there. I also love that he signs it as H West. Just so uh, there's no, <laughs> there's no uh, confusion as to who he is. Illustrations in this one by Christopher Jones. Uh, not, not too bad. He's got a really like weird, inking style where it's like very splattery on a lot of uh he uses a lot of ink splatter i think he thinks that he's david lloyd um i mean maybe maybe christopher jones is a very respected artist and i'm talking out of my ass but um <laughs> i don't think he's uh he's uh, he's got the, the same chops as a david lloyd but in general kind of looks pretty good uh it follows the movie pretty closely but i still much prefer the movie to, uh, to this adaptation. This movie is one of my comfort movies. I will uh, watch it at any time. Uh, you know, if, I, if I'm having a sick day, if I want to have some peace and quiet, I'll throw on Reanimator. It is uh, just a really nice time. <laughs> there you go. Next up is Saw. I was a huge Saw stan. Back when these movies were like first coming out, I was in high school. I was obsessed obsessed with the saw movies uh so only natural that i would grab the saw comic book this is saw rebirth uh art by renato guedes 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 uh the art is good uh mostly um but the big problem here is that this is a pretty boring comic and nothing happens in it it's like it's about jigsaw before he becomes jigsaw like it's about him like getting his cancer diagnosis and just like working and trying to kill himself and then he like comes up with the idea to become jigsaw and that's really the only thing that we get out of this uh there's no actual like violence he doesn't kidnap anyone or kill anyone it's all just prequel and like that's super boring (laughs) so that's really 
unfortunate. In the same vein, a seven um, by uh, Tommy Castillo did the pencils on this one, and it doesn't have a a uh, doesn't have an inker credited. I think maybe, but I don't know if there are inks on this. It might just be digital coloring, just like over it. Uh, anyway, this one's also a prologue to the movie Seven. Uh, it's uh, just about the first victim who was uh, th- his his sin was gluttony. So it's just about following him and just his inner monologue. Uh, it's again, it's like it's just something a little bit extra. I think they made more of these. I think they did more for the other sins. I don't know. I feel like it would make sense if they did, but I've never seen any of them and I don't super want <laughs> the rest of them. I just got this one because it's the first one, you know, that's what you do. Oh yeah. But yeah, issue five. Oh no, this is something else. There's a final destination comic. I didn't know that. I'm with final destination Two. Anybody else traumatized? Can't drive behind a, <laughs> a truck on the highway. That's hauling anything at this point. Um, Silent Night, Deadly Night. This is actually a pretty recent one. This came out, I think, in the past year. Uh, I've never seen this movie. I've only seen I've seen the second one because that's the meme one. Uh, art by Pui's Calzada. And honestly, I mean, this is not. I'm not too impressed with this one. I, I got it on the strength of the cover. I liked the <laughs> the, the killer Santa, um, but there's there's not too much here that I'm impressed by. Nothing, nothing as good as Garbage Day from Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2. But yeah, sorry, I really breezed through that one. Uh, and of course, I had to have the Swamp Thing adaptation in here. Uh, this is based on the Wes Craven movie. Art by uh, Mark Teixeira, or Texaria, I don't know how he pronounces it. Um, and Tony DeZuniga. And it's okay. Uh, as far as, I mean, Tex, Mark Texera has some incredible art under his belt. I mean, he, he did a run on Wolverine, which uh, I've, I've flipped through only to just look at the art. Um, I don't, uh, I don't super care about Wolverine. Uh, I've never read the story, um, but his artwork is, is really impressive. Uh, it, it's like perfectly suited for Wolverine. This is kind of, I don't know, low key. His swamp thing's okay. Tony de uh, Tony de Zuniga's, inking is okay. I, I'm imagining it's him on the inks. Um, and the Wes Craven movie is just okay. It's it's really not uh, that impressive. It's definitely not Wes Craven's best. Um, I, I have an affinity for it, obviously, because it's Swamp Thing, but you know, I've never seen the sequel, Return of Swamp Thing, uh, which uh, it is definitely a blind spot. Of course, I've got to see it. How could I not, being the Swamp Thing guy? Uh, but but considering how I didn't love the first movie and that's supposed to be the good one, <laughs> uh, I'm not too excited about possibly watching the bad one. Uh, but this is a long one. This is something annual number one, so you definitely get your money's worth. A lot of pages here. And we'll wrap it up with Freddy. Uh, this is his first appearance in comics. Well, I guess magazines. This is a Marvel magazine, uh, which the first half of it, pencils are Rich Buckler. Second half is Tony DeZuniga again, and finishes by Alfredo Alcala. Um, and the art's pretty good um, for the most part. I like, honestly, the the first page and the last page are like the images from this magazine. Uh, everything in between is, you know, you got some, some interesting standouts. These are not bad. These panels. Got a lot of fun with different panel, uh, borders. And I think here you're getting Freddy Krueger's, uh, origin story. Um, which is pretty graphic and really cool part of the movies. I've seen all the movies of these. Uh, which one? Which one's my favorite? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say part three, the Dream Warriors. That one uh, I think stands out 
uh, that one, obviously the first one, I do like, um, uh, I like New Nightmare. It's kind of like Wes Craven's first attempt at Scream. It's not great, um, but it's at least interesting. Uh, and I've got to rewatch the second one because the second one is so bizarre and it's kind of gained this cult following as like the gayest horror movie ever made. And like, I see it. Like I, I like just thinking back on the first time I watched it, I get it. And I watched a documentary um, on shutter called uh, scream queen or scream Queens or something like that about the star of that movie. Um, uh, and what just the making of it. And then like them not realizing, well, or maybe only half of them realizing that they were making an extremely gay movie. And then the other half, not realizing it at all. Uh, pretty funny. Um, but we're getting up on the end here with that really impressive panel right there of, uh, he, uh Freddie's head as the volcano. Well, uh, this, this one, I feel like just this looks so much better than a lot of the art that came before it on the inside. Oh, you know, I like this one. I like this. One. Yeah, you got some good stuff in there. Not great, but also not too bad. So yeah, those are just a, a quick flip through of the horror comics, horror movie comics that I have. If you want to see deep dives of any of these, let me know. Uh, I'm happy to dedicate an episode to it. I also didn't put my aliens or predator comics in here because I'm thinking I'm going to do a separate video uh, on those. Uh, because I really like those, the Aliens Dark Horse comics and the Predator Dark Horse comics. So those will eventually come, I think. Uh, but let me know if any of these catch your eye. Uh, let me know your favorite horror comics, uh, horror comic adaptations. Thank you very much for spending some time with me today. But now it's time to get back to reading.